this little flea jumped up on the marketplace, it really sparked my interest. I typically don't look at ultralight aircraft because not typically anything that I fly. But this one had such a unique design and it's vintage. So I wanted to do a little bit of research about it. Came across that it was made back in the 1930s, so I believe 1930 itself, by a gentleman named Henry Minier. And he sold it as a an expensive kit. The idea being that, you know, you could pick this up, um, really kind of choose what engine you want to put on there. A lot of people use motorcycle engines. There's a ton of different variants, though. And you would have an inexpensive aircraft. Now it's been quoted as being the poor man's aircraft. I believe he was going more for uh, the Model T of aircraft. Now it had, you know, a small amount of success, but this design is very, very interesting. You can see it's a stagger wing, but there's no stabilizer on the back. There's no ailerons and there's no elevator. So how does all of that work? Well, the main wing there will adjust your pitch a series of cables hooked up to a single stick and then the stick itself would then control the rudder which would control your roll instead of yaw and the way that does it is beyond my comprehension of aerodynamics and pressure but apparently the center of gravity and the pressure created by this forward wing would and the shape of the wing being dihedral would allow the rudder to um, roll and that main wing would take care of your pitch. Now, as far as the textures go, they've done a fantastic job on this. Um, you can see that the wood on the front here has got wonderful markings on there, very high resolution. Um, all the sort of steel cabling, everything on there looks really well done. I, I can't really find a flaw in it. There's 18 different liveries and all of them look equally as good. I also want to point out that the rubber on the tires actually look like rubber where a lot of times uh, aircraft tend to look like they have plastic wheels. We also get some nice static elements here and even our own flight simulator coffee mug, which is nice. Um, and then there's a ladder uh, to get up and refuel if needed. Inside the cockpit, it's really the same as the outside. Very, very well done. Textures are high resolution, very detailed. Everything looks fantastic. Each model also has its own sort of layout, so different placement of gauges um, and where the throttle is, where your fuel uh, shutoff valves are. All that type of stuff is uh, a little bit different in each model, which is to be expected as this is a kit. Now... This is marked as the original variant, and it does have Minier's signature on there. So I'm guessing this was the sort of first one that was out there. Same with the Scott Squirrel engine that is on the front. Now to go over a few of the features inside, um, on this particular model, we have this compass that can be tilted so you can see it better. We have our bank indicator here, which I imagine this is a little ball of mercury. This is our magnetos. You do have a clock here, which you can adjust the time, airspeed, RPMs, altitude. Our mixture and throttle are just on the outside there. You can see those little wagon wheels. Now, as far as wheels, uh, there is a lot of different versions. There's even a ski and uh, one with some wheel covers on um, it as well, which looks fantastic. Now, I wish more developers would find creative ways to do exactly what this has, which is if you click on just like this is a sticker, right? So you click on it and boom, brings up this little panel with sort of modern avionics and some other controls. So you have a transponder, a little Garmin tablets, GPS here, and a comm radio. Now the comm radio, I think might have a little bug because the numbers don't change when you move the dials, but uh, I can see that they are changing the numbers on my actual flight panel. So we'll have a look at that in just a minute. They've also incorporated that this is your power button to turn on the battery. And I think that's a limitation of flight simulator as well, that it always has to have a sort of battery um, sort of button on there. Speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and get things fired up? This acts as uh, our panel for uh, the static elements, so we can click off the static elements. The table and ladder are now gone. This is our wheel chocks, which is actually just our parking brake. And then this variant uh, does have an option to 
uh, have a sort of cutout in the wing. So I guess you can look out above you. Um, but we'll want to go through and first pop on our power. So that will get fired up. You can see we also have um, a transponder here, which you can set to standby and all the good stuff as normal. I like what I was saying about the uh, frequencies here. You can see that they are not actually changing the frequencies. This would be your swap button. I can see them changing the frequencies on my flight panel, but um, they are not working in there. But I suppose you could use uh, the in-game ATC to still you know, do everything you need to um, there. And technically it would still work where some aircraft, if they don't even have, you know, this option, it will not uh, give you the option to use ATC. So we'll go ahead and close that down. To do that, you just go ahead and click back on that sticker. Now firing this up, we just need to get our magneto to on. And sorry, I rotated it too far over to the start button. Let's let that spin back down because it's not going to start so the way we need to start it is we need to go full rich on our mixture and then just crack the throttle a little bit and these were a hand start engine so instead of i clicked my start button but if you just click on it there it'll rotate over and fire up each engine does have a slightly different noise and also um there's some exhaust Sort of flames that will come out on the different engines which is modeled nicely as well now they did it, it put in some brakes on this that is not uh in the actual real world model i don't believe it had brakes it just used the service to slow down uh, but we can go ahead you can click off your brakes there and we'll go ahead and get taxied on out onto the runway all right so we are taxiing to just really get right on into the air there's no need to really uh, do any sort of pre-flight checklists or anything on this we just want to go ahead and advance that throttle in it takes off very quickly right around 30 miles an hour 35 miles an hour you can go ahead and rotate and up we go and we're currently at landy uh, island which is just off the coast of england i'll put a link down below for this um airport because it is freeware and they did a fantastic job for it you can download it if you want to recreate this flight or just have it as a cool place to fly because i love that little lighthouse So we're going to fly straight out just for a minute here. I want to show you um, the stall characteristics on this because it's fairly interesting, which we'll, we'll start now, where if I bring back and do a power off stall, we're just going to bring that power to idle. I'm just going to hold back. You can see I'm just pulling back, 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 back. We're down to 25 miles an hour, still holding. It doesn't break. It just sort of slowly falls you can see i'm just holding at 25 miles an hour and we're just kind of i don't know maybe 500 feet per minute coming down so it does not break on a power off stall which is i don't know if that's down to the design of the wings or if that is uh accurate or not now the reverse which is going to be a power on stall so let's go ahead and go back to full throttle and we can go ahead and start to reduce that airspeed there. Now, this one will break. Sometimes it's gentle and sometimes it will break to um, the right or left. I've had it do both. Let's see what happens here. I think we're going to have to do a little break to the left. Yep, there we go. And we can just quickly recover. So it's interesting because there's definitely, you know, down to the design of this aircraft, it does not do a power off stall. It just sort of, well, I guess it's stalling. It's, it's, it doesn't break. So we're just going to fly around the island and come back on into land.
Now, coming into land, they recommend around 35 to 25 miles an hour. Um, this version, I found, can slow down okay. Uh, some of the faster versions uh, take a little bit more. They're honestly like little rocket ships, especially, um, I think it's the Rotax one that you can get up to around 90 miles an hour on, which is uh, pretty crazy. Now, there is no trim wheel on this, but you still can trim. Uh, so if you do have a key bind or a setting to actually adjust your trim, which I'm sure you do, then uh, you're going to be able to use that. You can see I'm coming in a little fast here. See if we can't get rid of some of that speed. Close to that wall. There we go, there's 35. <laughs> oh, jeez. I might have touched that wall. All right, so we'll let this go. About 25 miles an hour, you can bring the tail down, and then we can start to apply those brakes. And like I said, this needs a fair amount of runway to sort of come to a stop. Overall, overall, this this little aircraft puts a giant smile on my face. How much am I going to fly it? I, you know, it's hard to say. Um, doing little flights like this, exploring little islands or, you know, areas that you wouldn't normally fly. And that's, that's why I came here. So I was like, where would be a fun place to fly this? And this is how I found this airport. Um, and then, thankfully, someone developed a very nice model of the airport for us to use so um i will put a link again down down below for you to download that if you'd like um but otherwise we are just gonna park up here um and i appreciate you watching uh this little flea jump around on an island off the coast of england thanks for watching take care